Hey everyone, Mike here from The Art of Guitar. Today I want to talk about eight ways that I believe video games primed me for a guitar career. I know that sounds kind of crazy, but my friend and I were talking the other day about what we did before we got obsessed with music. And uh, we both realized that we were both into video games. And I started to try to put two and two together and sort of link the, the two together. And I was realizing that video games really taught me a lot in preparing me for a life of guitar. And so I thought, you know what, I'll write out all the ways that I believe that it helped me, and then I'll make a video out of it and see if anyone can relate. Now I'm talking old time video game systems. Back in the day, we actually had a machine that just played two games. One was called Pong and the other was called Tank. There's a switch, you either played Pong or Tank and that's it. And the controllers were like these rotating weird controllers, I don't know, they didn't do too much. But we were amazed at them at the time. And then my grandma bought an Atari 2600 system that blew me away at the time. My cousin and I just went crazy over that thing. And then for one of my birthdays, uh, my dad actually bought me an Atari 5200. And then I thought I had it made because the graphics I thought were state of the art. They were at the time, but now when you look back, of course, they look super old. And then I made it all the way up to the Nintendo, the NES, the original. And then I found guitar. First off, if you play these early games, you realize that they're not very forgiving. If you die and you're in the middle of the game, most of the time you have to start over from the beginning. Sometimes you would get a cheat code, you know, a password that you can come back to, but uh, they didn't have built-in memory on these machines. So it couldn't remember where you left off, so if you shut it off, you just had to start over. Or if you died in the wrong spot, you'd have to start over. So I really believe these early games help cultivate in me a sense of stick to itness. It's kind of a funny word, stick to itness. But uh, you wouldn't believe how many people I've taught over the years that when things began to get kind of hard on guitar, they would just give up. They're just like, nah, I guess it's not for me, just because it was a little bit difficult for them. And I wonder if playing those early games and having to start over so many times uh, really instilled a sense of dedication to something, uh, kind of that drive, like, I'm going to beat this game. And uh, if you didn't have stick to itness, you just wouldn't play them because they were way too frustrating otherwise. So I do believe that was a huge factor in uh, teaching me how to stick with something, even if it gets difficult. There were times when I practiced guitar for so long and I got so lost in it that I'd be playing something and all of a sudden I would drool on the fretboard. I don't know if you guys have ever done that before, but I was always glad nobody was there watching me because it's so embarrassing. Suddenly you're just drooling like a baby on the fretboard. So I realized that I would get lost like that in early video games. So I was just fixated on it. And it really helped me learn how to focus on one thing for a long period of time. So just like practicing scales, you know, I would play the game over and over and over again, or it would be so difficult that it would take me hours and hours. And I would literally just sit there and my parents got worried about me sometimes. But uh, you know, people say when you watch TV, you go into this weird alpha state trance. I may have been in that a little bit, but really my brain was trying to figure things out. And uh, if you could have hooked up a machine to my brain and, and saw it, it would probably have been firing like crazy because there's so many challenges I had to get through and I would just learn to focus and uh, ride it at that level for a long period of time, which I transferred over to when I played guitar as well. This next one's pretty obvious, but it's so important. It's hand-eye coordination and also timing. I kind of think those things are tied together. When you play video games, you know, you start to uh, see something and you react to it. And sometimes you have to figure out ways to hit the button really fast so you get really good motor skills in that sense. And uh, people think I'm joking about this, but I actually used to play the Nintendo controller with my middle finger sometimes to hit the button really fast. And I used the same technique that I did there to do a few guitar techniques. One of which is pick tapping. So I'll take a pick and I'll just bounce it in the same fashion that I would push the B or A or B button on the NES controller. So I would go like this. It's a weird technique, but all I do is I put the side of the pick on the string and I vibrate my hand like I would hitting the button. And I've used that in solos for like surfing with the alien, uh, do it for a few Metallica solos, and it really comes in handy. It also helped me develop kind of an interesting tremolo picking technique. So what I do is I just make my whole hand do what my finger was doing earlier. So I'll just go. Video games are all about timing when you're doing shooter games or whatever. Uh, every game requires some form of timing. And I believe what that does is it sort of forms an inner rhythm in your body. So when you're playing certain video games, you just feel like it's almost automatic 
because of the timing factor. You just get used to it. Same thing with solo. Sometimes I'm playing, I don't even remember what I'm playing. Sometimes I'm just kind of lost in the music. And I'm like, how do my hands just know how to play everything in the right time? And I wonder if there's a very strong correlation between early training of video games and playing solos today. Pattern recognition is huge. My brain likes to find patterns in almost anything. So if I hear a song right away, I'll compare it to another song and I'll say, oh, this is the same structure as this other tune. Uh, sometimes I get annoying because I'm always comparing things. So my brain's always looking for patterns. When I played Pac-Man, especially, you start to look for patterns and which ways to go, and all of a sudden you would develop this uh, pathway that you would take all the time and win. Early on, my brain would just remember all these different patterns, and when I started playing Miss Pac-Man, it got really crazy because the boards change and the patterns change and everything. So I uh, really started to develop the ability to see patterns and to execute patterns. So it's no different to me on the fretboard. It's kind of strange when I see scales or I see a solo, sometimes I'll just see an outline of a pattern. And I think that's very much connected to my early video game days. It's real easy to falter when you're playing live or you're in some sort of pressure situation where there's a lot of eyes on you to make a lot of mistakes. But I attribute my ability to stay pretty cool in those situations now, of course there are exceptions, but uh, to my early days playing very intense video games. You know, you get to the end, you're about to fight the boss, you've played it all day, you finally got to the, the big moment, and you have to learn to stay calm. Because obviously if you freak out, you're gonna make a mistake and die and sometimes have to start all the way over. Nowadays, I don't think it's as intense. You know, I play a lot of virtual reality games now. I just got one of those Oculus Quest 2s. And I know if I die, I can start back over in the same board. Or they even let you through sometimes if you can't do it. It's really strange. I've played a few games where they're just like, they know that you're having trouble, so they give you an easier path. And I'm like, you know what? That was never that way, not to sound too, too old. When I was a boy, we didn't have these video games. But back in the day, they didn't give you that option. You just died and you had to start over. So that extra added pressure, especially when you get to the end of the game or the end of the board, uh, really starts to mount. And if you can stay cool and collected and actually still defeat the enemy, the boss at the end, uh, it really teaches you huge lessons for the rest of your life. Video games give you something to master. And that might not seem like a big deal if you just say, oh, I wanna master a video game. Sometimes people will roll their eyes, kind of laugh at you like, "What's? why would you wanna do that? It's a waste of time, you know? But just mastering something, in my opinion, teaches you how to master something. And then you can apply that to other things. So there's a great saying about knowing the way broadly. Once you know that, you could apply it to other things. I'm totally butchering that quote, but it's a Musashi quote. Uh, and he just talked about how when you master something, no matter what it is, it could be calligraphy, uh, it could be sword fighting. You could take that those skills and apply them to other things. I was able to take that idea of mastery and move it to the guitar and be able to get better at guitar a lot quicker. Because when I picked up the guitar, I got good pretty fast early on. I was still terrible, but I made big strides early on. And I think a lot of that is because I had already been primed from video games to know the steps to mastery. It's very important. You ever notice in school, they taught you what to memorize quite a bit. They would throw facts at you, make you repeat them. But rarely did they teach you how to think, how to solve problems. I just kind of noticed that. But when I played video games, I realized that I was problem solving constantly. Because way early on, you know, I didn't have any strategy guides. Maybe I would have a Nintendo Power, but uh, that would only cover so many games. And usually it wasn't the game you were playing at the time. So you really had to figure things out for yourself. Now they did have a thing eventually where you could call Nintendo and they would uh, have a counselor, which is a great idea. Like I really wish back then I could have been one of these people. It sounds like a dream job. So when I would play Zelda, man, I, there were nights where I just went to bed so frustrated because it's like, I'm never gonna figure out how to use the stupid whistle or whatever it was. And so there was a lot of problem solving involved with that. When I started to play guitar, same story. You know, we didn't have the internet. I couldn't just ask anybody how to do a certain technique. So I'd have to figure things out for myself. And that really caused me to create some of my own techniques. Later, I realized other people did these techniques, but at the time I really had to make them work for myself. So I thought I invented them. A lot of circular picking techniques, uh, like I said, the pick tapping stuff, pinch harmonics. I mean, I read an article on how to do it once, but I really had to cultivate my own way to do it. But I wouldn't have figured that out if I just had somebody walk me through it. I truly believe because I had to really contemplate things and dissect them in my brain and obsess over them that I was able to come up with some pretty cool things on my own. The last thing I'll talk about is dealing with the agony of defeat as well as the thrill of victory. So it was really great to feel like you accomplished something. That sense of accomplishment is huge in people's lives. 
Sometimes people who don't ever feel that, they get kind of depressed, they get down, they don't feel like they've done anything significant. But if you just beat a video game that you've been working really hard towards, uh, you'd be surprised that sense of accomplishment can really carry you over for a long time. And I was really surprised how long I felt great after finally beating a game. One of them would be Mike Tyson's Punch-Out. The night I knocked Mike Tyson out in the NES world, uh, it was one of the best nights of my life, and to this day I get a good feeling every time I remember the time I actually beat it. Uh, and then of course the agony of defeat, when you just cannot beat a game and you have to go to bed and you rage quit, and you slam down the controller. I'm surprised I didn't break the Nintendo, because a few times I slammed down the controller and I like ripped the cable out of the, uh, the box, and bad things happen. But it really taught me some character, I believe, to have to go to bed frustrated, and then the whole night you're thinking about it, and you're just, uh, you know, it makes the thrill of victory that much greater when you do finally beat it. And of course, there were games that I never ended up defeating because they were way too difficult, and then I eventually didn't care because I found guitar. But I think one of these days I'm gonna whip out the old NES and I'm gonna try to defeat them today just so I can cross it off my bucket list or something. So I felt the thrill of victory on guitar many times, as well as the agony of defeat. By the way, I've probably felt defeat way more than victory, especially early on, you know, going to bed every night going, oh, I never quite got that solo. And then eventually playing live and maybe you made a few mistakes, you feel terrible. But when you do play it correctly, when you finally nail the solo, when you finally get the song down, it's such a great feeling. And uh, I'd say a hundred times better than when I played video games. Now the three things I believe video games lacked that guitar has. So one of them is for me, the competitive side. You would think with video games, it's easy to be competitive, but back when I played, we didn't have what we have today. Today, you could just, I could jump on the Oculus and I could play with my friends and we could, you know, run around and shoot each other. We could do all sorts of things. But back in the day, having the two player games was kind of lame. You would just play and then your friend would play and you just sit there, then, you know, back and forth. And so I really didn't play against my friends too much. The game we played the most together was Major League Baseball. And that was probably the most competitive that I was able to get with Nintendo. But with guitar, even though this might sound a little bit bad. I believe that I improved on guitar a lot because my best friend and I had sort of this healthy rivalry going on. So we both played guitar, started around the same time, and then we were both trying to outdo each other. So that sense of competitiveness actually benefited both of us. I never really felt creative when I played Nintendo, even though I had to find my own ways to beat the game sometimes. Still, at the end of the day, it's been programmed, you know? When it comes to guitar, I feel like I can create something, I can write a song, I can write a solo, and be creative in that way. So the sense of being creative for older video games just wasn't there very much. Nowadays, you could build your own world. It's a whole different story. So uh, this is just something that pertains to the older video games that I played. And finally, the sense of self-expression was lacking when it came to video games. You just sit there and play, you'd beat it, you'd feel good or bad, you know, depending on if you lost or if you won. With guitar, I feel like if I feel bad, I can express it through the guitar. The only way to express myself through video games if I felt bad was by almost breaking the controller, which is not healthy. But with guitar, you can express love, happiness, sadness, everything you want through this instrument. And so I think in the end, I made the right choice of going with guitar for my career. But who knows, if things were different, today I might be a full-time gamer. Who knows? But I'm glad I found guitar, and now I can go back and play video games as a hobby. Like I said, I've been playing virtual reality games lately, having a great time doing that. So guitar is my main thing. Video games as a hobby is the perfect uh, setup for me. So I'm very grateful for that. All right, guys, hopefully that was fun to watch. A trip down memory lane once again to the early video games. Uh, I bet you some of you guys can't believe what we played back in the day, but uh, we had fun because it was brand new back then and it was very exciting. So, all right, guys, we'll see you at the next lesson or the next live stream. Take care. Bye.